If you guys are using WordPress, you've probably discovered this plugin auto-installed on your websites. Even myself, I've seen this plugin and I just thought it was an ordinary contact form. But after using this plugin, I realized this does a lot more than just offer a simple contact form. WP Forms is a very robust contact form that allows you to add a contact form, email subscription, and many other types of forms on your websites. You can use WP Forms to create various types of forms, like a booking form, a donation form, or even turn this into an e-commerce form where you just can enter their credit card and buy your goods or services through this form. What's even better, this form has more than 600 different page templates ranging from business operations, education, entertainment, marketing, registrations, and other various niches. It also has various email integrations like ActiveCampaign, Aweber, MailChimp, and many more. So in this video, I'll show you guys how to first use the free version and all the features in the free version. Then I'll touch base more about all of the pro features in this plugin. I'll also show you how to connect the SMBT plugin to make sure emails don't end up in spam. We will also cover how to add a recaptcha to your form so you don't get a bunch of those spammy emails to your inbox. We will also integrate Google Places API so your contact forms will auto-fill your customer's address or location for them automatically. Sounds good? Cool. So in this video, we're gonna make five different contact forms. In the first example, I'll show you how to create a simple contact form using this drag and drop builder. In the second example, I'll show you how to create an email subscription form where users can sign up for your newsletter or email list. For example three, I'll show you how to create a booking form. This will allow people to book directly on your website using this contact form. You can also accept payments or even offer free bookings. Example four, donation form. I'll walk you through how to create a buy me a coffee form that you can easily add on your sidebar or many other parts of the website. You can even add a recurring subscription donation where you just can pay a subscription donation on your website. Example five, e-commerce. I'll show you how to create a form where you can add products and sell services directly on your contact form. So as you guys can tell, the WP Forms plugin is very robust and there's a lot of different type of forms you guys can make. You guys can make a booking form, you can make a simple contact form, an email subscription, the works. So in this video, I'll walk you guys through how to create those specific examples. Now also there is timestamps in the description. So if you guys do wanna jump to any part of this video, feel free to do so. And uh, with that said, let's get started. So first let's go to section one. Let me show you guys how to create a simple contact form using the WP Forms plugin. All right, so let's get started. Now, this is a website that I showed people how to make using Elementor. If you guys do wanna learn how to make this website, I will go ahead and leave a link to that tutorial also in the description below of this video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and first install the WP Forms plugin. Let's go over here to plugins and go to add new. Many of you guys probably already have this plugin installed, which I obviously already do, but just in case you guys don't, you'll go over here, type in WP Forms, and then you'll see WP Forms plugin. This is by far the most popular contact form plugin for WordPress because I mean, there's just so much you can do. I mean, they have everything. So you'll first click on install and then you'll click on activate. All right, once you guys do that, you will then see WP Forms pop up on the left side. So first let's click on all forms. Now, whenever you guys create a form, they will be displayed here automatically, right? So when you create your first contact form, you guys can always go back and refer to all your forms from this location. But the first thing is let's go ahead and click on add new and we're gonna create our first form. Now here we have different forms, right? We have different various templates you guys can choose from. We have a simple contact form, newsletter, hair extensions, prom date application. That, that is very interesting, but we're not gonna do that. And here are some other templates that you guys can use just in case you guys want to go ahead and get started with a template. But first let's start with a blank form and I'll show you guys all the options and show you how to build one from scratch, just in case you don't wanna use a template. All right, so here we go. Now, on the left side, you're gonna see that we have standard fields and then we have fancy fields. Now, the fancy fields are only located in the pro version and the standard fields are in the free version of WP Forms. Now, this is a very simple drag and drop builder where we can go ahead and drag in these elements onto our form. So we're gonna make a simple contact form, right? So the first thing obviously is we're going to drop in the name, right? Duh, right? So we have the name. And if you click on this element right here, you're gonna see that we have a few tabs. We have the general, advanced, and then we have smart logic. This is available in the pro version and I will be talking more about conditional logic a little bit later in this video. But um, for all of these different styling options here, you guys will see that uh, they have some options. So we have the label, the format, and then some description. 
Now, the label is basically saying, you know, do you want to change this? You could put, you know, your name or something like that. And for the format, here we have a few options. We can select it to simple, first and last, or even first, middle, and last, but I don't think many people ask for your middle name, so let's just do first and last. Now for the description, this gives you the option to add description underneath this actual form, which I don't know, you know, why, but you could add like a note here, like we only want your first and last name. I don't know, you know, just an example. You know, you can, you can add in different, uh, you know, descriptions here for every single element. Now the advanced is more for styling, right? So here we have the field size, which you can change to small, medium, and large. And then you can also add a placeholder text. So if you wanna have a placeholder text right here, you can go ahead and add that in, right? So first and then last. But obviously we already have it below that, so we don't need to, but that's what placeholder text is. It's just text to help prompt the user to type something in, all right? Now here we have hide label where you can also hide the main label of the actual form, okay? Now that is just a general rundown of every element, right? Many of the elements do have very similar options. So if you want to mess around with those, that's how you do it. Let's go back now to add fields. So we have the name, right? But now we need to add in the email. So we'll take email and we'll drag it there, okay? And if I click on that, we can also update the label and description. And then for the advanced, obviously there's just a little bit more advanced options where we can add placeholder text, field size, and then the other various options like I showed you guys previously. Let's now click on add fields and we're now going to add in another text right here or another element. So we're gonna take the paragraph text and we're gonna drop it below email. Now the paragraph text, you might wanna change this to something like your message, right? to let them know this is where they're gonna write their message. And of course, the advanced, same exact options. Now, for every element, they do have a little bit more options. They're not all the same. Like for example, let's say you guys don't want like a whole uh, essay, you know, sent to your, your, uh, your email. You guys can say, look, you guys can write us a contact form, but you're gonna limit it to a thousand characters because we don't want people sending us large paragraphs and large messages. And I get those quite often. And to those users who do send me those, I do my best, but I usually just don't respond to them because they're just too large, you know? Or we can say, you know what, a thousand words, you know? Uh, you, you can pick either one, right? But uh, that's just an example of, you know, giving you more flexibility with these elements. Now let's go back to add fields. Let's say for instance, you guys wanna just get a little bit more flexible and, you know, use it, these other elements. Like for example, multiple choice. Multiple choice is actually a very common one. So here we have multiple choice. And let's say for example, you guys are a web design company and you want to add in something like web design project. We have SEO, right? And then we have like graphic design. And if you guys are a large agency, you can just basically forward this email to whoever, you know, depending on what they pick. So graphic design. And for label, we're gonna change this to what services are you interested in? Now there is a lot more options you guys can add to this. You know, there if you want, you guys can even go a step further and add in images to every single one of these if you want to add in images. So you can also add images as well. All right, now that we've created this contact form, let's go ahead and save it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. Okay, so now that we saved this form, I wanna also introduce you all to some of the other options here on the left sidebar. So over here, let's click on settings. Now let's say for example, you guys want to change the name of this form because right now it's a blank form. This is like our web design form, right? Or web design quote form. So here we have the submit button text. This is the text that appears on the button of your forms. So you'll see you can update that text to whatever you guys would like. Next we have the submit button processing text and this is the actual text when someone actually clicks on the button, it'll then say submitting or sending or processing and you can also update that there. And below that, we have some CSS options where if you guys do know CSS, you guys can add in your CSS there by class, all right? Now let's go ahead and click on save. And next we're gonna go to spam protection and security. Now by default, they're going to enable their own spam filtering, but later on in this video, I'll show you guys how to enable the Google V3 reCAPTCHA, which is actually a lot more uh, powerful and that will really prevent spam from going to your email inbox. And next we have notifications. Now notifications are basically the default notifications that are sent to your email. So here we have send to email address. This is the email address that the contact form will be sent to. You can find this admin email in the general settings of your WordPress dashboard.
You guys can find the email address that you're registered with in the general and settings tab of your website. So here you'll see that you have the administration email address, and this is the email address that all of the contact forms will be sent to. So next you have the email subject line. This is the email subject line that will arrive in your email inbox. So if you wanna to update to something to remind you that it's coming from your websites, here I'll put Elementor Pro website. So now I know it's coming from this website and then I'll just help remind me of, you know, where it's coming from and stuff like that. Next we have the name. So this will be the name. So this will be like my name, right? This will basically say it's coming from my website here. So usually it says my blog, but I'll just update that to like Daryl Wilson, right? So next we have the from email and this is going to be sent from the admin email. You guys can also add something in there like the no reply. You'll see here they gave you an example of it. So I'll go ahead and actually use this right here. So I'll just put no reply at our domain, or you guys can just simply put out of an email if you guys choose to do that. Now here we have the reply to, I'm gonna leave mine as blank right here because um, I don't want users to actually reveal my email address. So if you guys do want a reply to email address, you guys can go ahead and leave that there. And then lastly, we have the email message where this is the email message that will be sent from your contact form to your inbox. All right, let's go ahead now and click on save. Now let's test the contact form. So let's go back to our website. Now I'm using the Elementor page builder, but you guys can use any page builder with this plugin. So I'll show you guys how to use the WP form short code with any page builder, but you'll first go ahead and turn on your page builder. Now, if you guys go to WP forms right here and you guys actually close this, you will then see that you have a short code on the right side next to all of your contact forms. So I'll go ahead and take this short code here. And again, just to remind you guys, this is the form that we just created. So after you save and you finish creating it, you will then get a short code that you can insert anywhere on your websites. And you'll simply take that short code and put it anywhere on your website and it will propagate. Now, if you're using a page builder like Gutenberg or any other page builder, uh, I think all of them have a short code module. So you'll just type in short code here and then you can go ahead and take that short code and drag it in. So I'll go ahead and first delete this to give you guys an example short code, we're gonna take that and drop it in. And then I'll paste it in there like that. Now this works for pretty much every single page builder out there. If a page builder does not have a short code module, you can use the actual text elements. But I think everyone does out there. I, I, I don't know, but I, I think everyone does. But you can always just grab a text editor and use the visual and then drag it in and paste the code in there. But I think everyone has a short code module for their page builder. But um, this is if you guys are using a default page builder. If you guys are using Elementor, which a majority of you might, they also do have a WP Forms integration. So you'll now see that you have WP Forms here on the left side, and I can go ahead and drag and drop that. There is a very slight advantage for this integration, and I think the only advantage that you have is the display options here, where you can choose to display the form name and also the description of your form, and that's it. I mean, that's the only thing that it does. So it's not that big of a benefit, but uh, whatever. If you wanna add that in, you know, knock yourself out. Now that we added this form here, you guys will see that everything propagated. So we have the name, what services are you interested in, the email, your message, and submits. So let's go ahead now and click on update. All right, so now let's run a test transaction to see if our contact form is working and integrated with our email and websites. So let's go ahead and close the builder. I'll go to view page. Now we're gonna enter a message. So I'm gonna put Daryl Wilson. What services are you interested in? We're gonna put web design. We're gonna put our Portuguese email address and we'll put howdy. And then right here, I'll click on submit. Thank you for contacting us. We will be in touch with you shortly. So this message you guys can also change as well in the general settings. So now that we sent the email, let's go ahead now and check our email inbox. And now you guys will see that we have the contact form that arrived in our email inbox. So if I click on the message, you guys will see that this is the message that was sent from our contact form. Now there is a small caveat. Sometimes when you guys are using this plugin, it will send the emails to spam. And that really depends on your server and that's really out of my control. However, I will show you guys a way how to integrate the SMPT plugin, which will force it to go directly into your email inbox and not into your spam folder. Cause that is a very common practice with these plugins and WordPress and that's just how it is guys. You know, I'm just the middleman, but I will show you guys how to use that plugin. So it'll go directly into your email inbox. But if you guys did get it in your inbox, congratulations. We have now integrated the contact form onto our website. Now let me show you guys how to create the second example. And let me walk you guys through how to create an email subscription 
that will actually collect emails on your behalf. You can actually put this on any part of the website. You can put it on your contact page, under your blog post, and even the sidebar of your blog page as well. So I'll walk you guys through how to integrate your email provider and then add it to your website. And just to give you guys a little example here, this is a blog post that we have actually created. And if you scroll down right here, on the right side, we have this buy me a coffee, and then we also have this email subscription box. You guys can use it, use this next example to add this to the right side of your blog post, or you can add it you know, pretty much anywhere that you want. So let me first walk you guys through how to create it, and then you can take that short code and put it anywhere you want on your website. So let's go to our dashboard. So we're gonna go to WP Forms, and let's just click on add new this time. And this is actually really simple. Now the free version of this plugin only allows you to use constant contact. If you guys wanna use something like a Weber or MailChimp or something like that, you guys will need to upgrade to the Pro. But if you guys want to go the free route, I'll show you guys how to integrate constant contact using this plugin. So first, let's just use a template this time. We have a newsletter signup form. I'll click on use template because we're only adding in two fields here. So there's really not much you guys can learn, right? So it's just your name and your email, that's it, right? Now, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, click on marketing now. So now we have marketing, and here we have constant contact. Now, what we're gonna first do is you first need to create a constant contact account, and then you can integrate it. The great part is, is that this does everything for you, so it's really simple. So right here, I'll click on try constant contact for free, and this is going to prompt you to go to the website here, and then it's going to you know prompt you to create an account, right? So we're first going to go to start a trial, and you'll just go ahead and fill all this information out. Now, I already have a account with them, so I'm just gonna simply log in. So here I'll go ahead and log in. All right, so I went ahead and I logged into my account. Now, I'm gonna go back to WP Forms, and here I'm gonna click on Add New Connection. And I'm just gonna type in something like Newsletter Opt-in, right? Newsletter Opt-in. Click on OK. And once you guys create an account, you will then be able to select your account. So here's my account right here. And here's my list. So I'm gonna select WP Forms, okay? And for the email, I'm just gonna make sure this is selected to email. That is basically saying, I want to take my email and I want to put it in this specific list right here in my constant contact account. You guys got that? All right, so now let's go ahead and click on save. Once that's done, now let's go ahead and take that contact form and let's embed it on the website. So I'm gonna close this. Here is my newsletter signup form. I'll take this short code and I'm gonna go to my blog post and I'm gonna insert it in my blog. All right, so I am using the Elementor Theme Builder here. If you guys do wanna learn more about this, I have tutorials on the Theme Builder in the description, but I'm gonna take the short code module here and I'm gonna paste it below here. So I'm gonna paste it right there. Now I'm gonna enter that short code right there. And now you guys will see that we have this uh, short code, right? So there it is. Go ahead and apply that. So now you guys will see that we have the email subscription box. Now I'm gonna take a heading text and I'm gonna drag it above the contact form just to let them know that this is our subscription box where they can sign up for our newsletter. So I'll put right, up, sign up for newsletter. Maybe we can even design that by making it just a tad smaller, right? There we go, sign up for newsletter. And since I'm a perfectionist, we're gonna add some padding there to the top, right? Okay, I'll click on update. And now I'm going to close this builder. View page. All right, so here's my blog post. And now you guys will see that we have the sign up for newsletter. So I'm gonna put Daryl Wilson, PC hoarder at gmail.com, and then we'll submit it. So that's how you guys can add an email subscription box to your website. And you guys can take that show code and put it anywhere you want on your website. So I added it on the right sidebar, but you can also maybe even add it below your blog post, which some people do. So it just depends on how you wanna approach it. That's how you can integrate the email subscription box. So now let's check the constant contact website. So here is my list. And here I'll click on WP Forms and you'll see that our website is now synced up and our website is fully integrated with WP Forms. So all of the email subscribers that sign up will arrive directly into your subscription list on Constant Contact. I'll show you guys how to integrate other ones a little bit later, but uh, Constant Contact is available in the free version. 
So now that I showed you guys how to use the basic contact form and also the email subscription, now let me walk you guys through how to add a reCAPTCHA and also how to integrate the SMPT plugin on your website so your messages don't end up in spam, which is probably one of the most common uh, complaints with WordPress and these plugins is that many of the times it does end up in spam. I have been there guys, I understand. So let me first walk you guys through how to add a reCAPTCHA, then I'll show you guys how to add in the SMPT plugin so your emails go directly into your email inbox. You guys ready? Let's get started. So to add a reCAPTCHA, we're first going to go to our dashboard here. Now the great part is the reCAPTCHA is completely free and does not cost us anything whatsoever. So we're first going to go to WP Forms and then we're going to click on Settings. On these tabs up here, you're going to see General, Email, and then you're going to see CAPTCHA. Go ahead and click on CAPTCHA. Now HCAPTCHA is actually a free service that you guys can use. The thing I don't like about HCAPTCHA though is that they actually have these pictures and you have to like click on the right pictures. And I feel like that's really annoying and I don't wanna put your customers through that. So we're gonna use the V3 reCAPTCHA that Google has created. And this is the most up-to-date version of reCAPTCHA. So you'll click on reCAPTCHA and then we're gonna click on the reCAPTCHA version three. Now, obviously you guys can see I've already went through the process, but we're gonna walk you guys through the process of setting this up from scratch. Now, the first thing you guys are gonna do is you're gonna click on read our walkthrough. Now, we're gonna follow this walkthrough together just to make sure that we're all on the same page. And if you guys have any trouble with this, let me know in the comments below. All right, and we're gonna scroll down and you guys are also gonna to wanna to click on the Google's reCAPTCHA admin console link. Go ahead and click on this link. I will also leave this link in the description below of this video. So if you guys can't find it for whatever reason, I'll leave that in the description. Now you guys will need to have a Gmail account. So if you're not prompted to this page, it's because you guys need to have a Gmail account. I'm sorry if you guys don't like Gmail, but this is required in order to enable the Google reCAPTCHA on your websites. Now here you're gonna see a label, right? So just go ahead and put a label. This is just gonna be like a Elementor Pro website. Okay, just to uh, let me know that it's on this website. Now we're gonna select the reCAPTCHA version three. This is the latest reCAPTCHA. And the great part about this is that it doesn't require any annoying puzzles and stuff like that. It's a little bit more automated for your customers. Now here we have the domains. Go ahead and put your domain of your website. So let's go over here and I'm gonna take this, copy that, and then we're gonna paste it there. All right, so I entered in my domain, elementarprotutorial.com. Here, I will make sure that we have our email selected. So you wanna make sure that your email is right there. Then you will click on accept the captured terms of service, and then we'll click on submit. Next, you're gonna see you have the copy site key. So we're gonna go ahead and take this, and then we're gonna paste it over here. Okay. And then for the secret key, we will copy this, and we're also gonna paste it over here as well. Now just remember and make sure that there is no spaces at the end of this, because if there's one space like that, then the entire thing will not work, okay? So we'll go ahead and add in the secret key and we'll scroll down and click on save settings. Now that we enabled the reCAPTCHA, we now need to add it to our contact form. So let's go back over here to all forms. Now, whatever form that you want to add the reCAPTCHA to, you're gonna go ahead and click on the form and then you'll edit it. You will then add in the reCAPTCHA to every individual form where you want to add the reCAPTCHA to. So on the left side, you're gonna see settings. We're gonna to go to spam protection and security. Now right here, you're gonna see CAPTCHA and then you're gonna see enable Google V3 reCAPTCHA. So click on the enable V3 reCAPTCHA and then click on save. Now let's close this. So now we're back on our website here and I'm gonna click on contact us. And if we scroll down, you're gonna see that we have the recaption now as well. So we can go ahead and fill this out again. All right, so Daryl Wilson, graphic design. And then click on submit. Now the reCAPTCHA is on your website and will filter all of these spam emails automatically. So you'll see at the bottom right, it says protected by reCAPTCHA. So we now know that the V3 Google reCAPTCHA is now integrated with our contact form. And if we go to our email inbox, you guys will see that we have the email right here. And if I click on it, you will then see that the message has arrived successfully into my email inbox. The reCAPTCHA does also help the emails prevent it from going to spam. So adding the reCAPTCHA does give you another layer of security and helps send the emails directly into your email inbox instead of it to your spam folder, which is very annoying. Trust me, I've been there. 
All right, pretty simple, right? Now in this next part of the video, I'm gonna show you guys how to add the SMPT plugin on your contact form. And this is actually very helpful. It doesn't matter what contact form you guys are using because one of the problems with WordPress is when you send emails, sometimes it goes to spam and that really depends on server configurations and server settings. And that is really like not a WordPress issue, but it's more of a hosting issue. But I'll show you guys how to integrate the SMPT plugin so that all of your emails will forced to go to your email inbox. It's pretty easy, so let's get started. So now we're back on our website and we're now going to integrate the SMPT plugin to route all the emails to your email inbox. So let's do that. Let's go over here to our dashboard. And right here, you'll see WP Forms and you're gonna see SMPT. Now here you're gonna see that this says activate WP Mail SMPT. So go ahead and click on activate WP Mail SMPT. Next, we're gonna click on go to SMPT settings. All right, so first let's click on let's get started. Now for this specific example, we're gonna use Gmail. The main reason why we're using Gmail is because that's probably the most popular email provider out there. There are other ones that you can integrate, but for this specific example, I'm gonna use Gmail. So let's click on save and continue. Next, I'll click on I understand continue. So you guys can see, I already have all of these settings integrated on my contact form, but I'm gonna walk you guys through step-by-step -step on how to do this. So right here, click on read how to set up Gmail mailer. All right, so I'm gonna walk you guys through these steps with you and just show you where this is, just to make sure that you guys don't get lost or you don't know where to go. So first go ahead and click on the Google Cloud Console. Now again, uh, to access this page, you guys must have a Gmail account. So if you don't have a Gmail account, go ahead and create one. And once you guys do that, it should bring you to a page where you guys can create a new project. So you guys can see, I do have quite a bit of forms right here, but what we're gonna do is that we're gonna make a new form, but let's go back to our page right here and we're gonna scroll down and follow each step one by one. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll down. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a project, right? So let's go back to our Google Cloud Console and over here under projects, we're gonna go ahead and create a new project. And this is gonna be the Daryl Wilson tutorial, all right? And then we're gonna click on create. So essentially we're just creating a project, right? We're just creating a project so that we have something to work with. Next, we're gonna scroll down. All right, I'll follow you guys here. So we put in our project name, we created it. Now we're gonna to go to our library. So we need to tell Google, okay, so we have a project, but what kind of API do we need or what kind do we wanna create? And there's many different kinds. There's YouTube, there's Google Maps, there's tons of them, right? So we're gonna select my project here, okay? Now on the navigational menu, you're gonna see API and services. Click on library. And this is the library of APIs Google offers. In case you guys don't know what an API is, an API is basically an integration to your website. So it pretty much syncs up any of these projects onto your website. And these can be anything. This can be the maps, they have learning machine, they have Google Drive, Gmail, YouTube. I mean, they have tons of tons of integrations here. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and select the Gmail API. So click on Gmail API. And then we're going to enable this API. So click on enable. Once you guys create the API, on the right side, you're gonna see create credentials. Go ahead and click on create credentials. Next, we're gonna select the Gmail API, right? Cause that's what we're working with. And we're gonna select user data and then we'll click on next. Go ahead and give your app a name. Now, this is only for you and this really isn't going to showcase anywhere, but we're just gonna put in the Elementor Pro website. And this is our support email, all right? So this will need to be an email that you guys use sign up with uh, I guess Google Cloud. And then we're gonna scroll down. And here you have developer contact information. You're also gonna put in your email right here. Now, if you guys do wanna upload a logo here, you guys can always go ahead and do that, but I'm not gonna upload a logo and you guys don't really need to. So right here, click on save and continue. After you guys have done that, we're going to go ahead and scroll down here and then we'll just click on save and continue. So we're not gonna add any scopes. So I'll click on save and continue. And for the auth client ID, we're gonna go ahead and select web application and then just give yourself a name right here. So this is like a Daryl Wilson, right? Now we're gonna scroll down and then you're gonna see that you have these two options right here. 
So now let's go back to the WP Forms tutorial right here. And you're gonna see that under the authorized redirect URLs, we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste this specific link. So I'm gonna copy this link, right? I'll go ahead and leave this link also in the description, just in case you guys aren't following this specific guide and just me. We'll go back over here. And under the auth authorized redirect URLs, you'll add a URL and we'll paste it in there like that. Then we'll go ahead and click on create. Once you guys do this, you will then see that you have this client ID. Go ahead and download this, but we're also gonna copy this. Once that's done, we'll then click on done. Now we're gonna grab our credentials. So you can either grab it from here or you can click on credentials here on the left side. Now, once you guys click on credentials here, you're gonna see that you have your client ID, but we're gonna click on the consent screen here and you wanna make sure that you publish the app. So we're gonna click on publish app and then click on confirm. Once that's done, we're gonna scroll down here and it looks like everything's good. So now you guys can see that this is now in production and it's no longer in testing mode. You also wanna make sure this is set to external and not internal. So as of now, the app is now live. We now need to go back to credentials over here and we're gonna click on our API. And on the top right side, you're gonna see that we have the client ID and then we also have the secret ID. We're now gonna go ahead and copy and paste this and put it on our contact form. So here's the client ID. I'll go ahead and paste that there. And for the secret key as well, we're also going to copy this and we're gonna paste it here as well. Here is our authorized redirect URL, which we already have inserted onto the Google Cloud Console. Once you guys have copied and pasted that, you'll then click on connect to Google. Now this does take a few minutes. So if you guys try it immediately, it may not work. It does take Google, it says around five minutes to actually sync up to the Google Cloud Console. But let's go ahead and click on our email. Now you guys might get to this page here and this is very common. You guys need to go ahead and click on advanced and then click on go to smpt.com. I know it says unsafe, but uh, that is actually a requirement. You guys have to go to the advanced. Here you're gonna see that SMBT wants access to our Google account. You'll then click on continue. All right, authorization successful. You have now linked the current site with your Google API project. You can now start sending emails through Gmail. Let's click on okay. And we're gonna scroll down and go to save and continue. Now here they're offering us just more upsells and other stuff, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and go to save and continue. Our email address, I'll put in uh, mine right here. You guys can choose to opt in to help them with bugs and stuff like that if you want. I'll click on save and continue. Skip this step. And here are some other plugins you guys can use, but uh, no thanks. We're just going to scroll to the bottom and click on finish setup. Now, if you go to your general account right here and you scroll down, you should see that this is actually synced up right here. So you'll see all your information here at the bottom. And then for the authorization, you'll see that it's connected under my email address. If I scroll to the bottom, I'll click on save settings. And now let's go ahead and test this out. So let's go over here to visit sites and let's go enter our information on this contact form to make sure it's working. So I'll put DW, Put SEO, Daryl at AOL.com. Great tutorial. And then we'll click on submit. Thanks for contacting us. We will be in touch with you shortly. So now let's go to our email inbox. Now, when you guys do integrate this with Google Cloud Console, it does take about a minute to get to your email inbox. You guys can see as I was talking right here, it automatically was sent here to my email inbox. So it's not instant, but it does take maybe I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute to actually arrive to your email inbox. And if I click on this, you guys will see also that the notice is now gone and this is fully integrated and it goes directly into your email inbox. So that's how you guys can use the free version. The free version of this plugin is incredible. I'll walk you guys through how to create a simple contact form. I then showed you how to create an email subscription. I then showed you how to create the reCAPTCHA and the SMBT. So at this point, you guys are fully uh, locked and loaded and ready to go. You guys can check out those other uh, forms and templates that they have. They have quite a bit. But in this part of the video, I'll show you guys how to use the pro version.
The pro version of this plugin allows you to integrate booking forms and also enable credit card payments on your form. So you can use this contact form to accept booking payments or even sell products directly from your contact form. If you guys do want to purchase the pro version of this plugin, we do have a link in the description below of this video. If you guys do use our link, it does help us to continue to make these tutorials for you guys all for free. So next, let me show you guys how to upload the WP Forms plugin onto your websites, and then I'll walk you guys through example three of creating a booking form with this contact form. You guys ready? Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to the pro section of this video. So in this part of the video, I'm going to walk you guys through how to use a majority of the pro features for this plugin. So I'm going to walk you guys through how to create a booking form. Then we're also going to integrate payment gateways onto that form. And then I'll also show you how to use the conditional logic. Conditional logic is basically saying if someone selects a specific option, another option may appear depending on what the user selects. So let me go ahead and walk you guys through how to install this plugin. And then I'll show you how to create example three, which is creating a booking form for your website. Let's go. So this is WPForms.com. And once you guys are here, we'll click on the pricing tab. Now they have four different plans. They have the elites, the pro, the plus, and the basic. And depending on which plan you pick, they have specific features for each plan. So for the basic plan, you guys can use like the unlimited features like the conditional logic, file uploads, customizations. However, if you guys want to get the plus plan that allows you to um, add in like the marketing integrations like MailChimp and also work automation and stuff like that. And then for the pro, which is usually what people mostly get, this gives you access to the payment gateway integrations where you can integrate Stripe, PayPal and other various uh, payment gateways. Now, I don't know which plan that you guys want to choose to be honest. So I'm just gonna go with the uh, pro right here because this offers a majority of the features. So I'm going to purchase the pro and depending on what you guys want or need, I'll show you guys how to use all of the features in the basic plus and the pro plan. And then we'll go from there. So go ahead and pick a plan that works best for you. So right here, I'll click on get started. Then you guys will go through the process here and purchase it. You guys can use credit card and you guys can also use PayPal to purchase the pro version. Once you guys do this, I'll go ahead and meet you in your customer portal. All right, and congratulations. Once you guys have made the purchase and now you are part of the WP Forms family, we can now go ahead and install and download the plugin. So let's go over here to downloads, and this is where you're gonna have access to your plugin. Now, right here, you'll see download WP Forms. This will allow you to download the pro version of this plugin. So go ahead and click on WP Forms. There also is this license key right here, and you guys will actually need to go ahead and copy and paste this and put this on your WordPress website. So right here, Let's go ahead and copy that and let's go back to our website. All right, now we're gonna go back to our WordPress website and we are now going to upload that plugin. So right here, let's go to dashboard, plugins, and go to add new. Now you guys can't access it in the back end, so you have to upload it. So make sure you downloaded the zip file. So right here, upload plugin, choose the file, and then we're going to download that zip file. Here it is, WP Forms, open, and then click on install now. All right, and once you do that, I'll click on replace current with uploaded. This may or may not prompt you depending if you have the light version installed. Then we'll click on activate plugin. All right, and once you guys do that, we're now going to enter our license code in the WP Forms plugin. So let's go over here to WP Forms and we're gonna click on settings. Here's the license key. You're gonna go ahead and copy and paste your license key right here. And once we do that, we'll click on save settings. And that's it, your plugin is now fully activated on your website. All right, now that we've done that, let's create a booking form. So let's go back over here to all forms and then we'll click on add new. Now the great thing is that once you guys actually do that, now you have access to all these templates. So you can actually go ahead and click on, you know, majority of these templates and they have tons of them. I mean, they have entertainments, event planning, health and wellness marketing, just all sorts of really cool stuff right here and obviously, there is way too many forms for me to go over because there's more than 600. Now, once you guys are here, just go ahead and type in dentist. And we're gonna work off this dentist appointment form just to get started out. So right here, I'll click on use template. So here is the dentist appointment form. On the left side, you guys are gonna see we have our basic standard elements, but we now have the option to use these standard fields. And you guys can take these and drag and drop these onto your form as well. For example, for the dentist appointment form, we might need to add a address, right? So I'll take the address right here and I'll drag it. 
And now you'll see that the address will propagate where they can enter their address, they can pick their city, their state, and also their zip code. You can also click on the address right here and you can fiddle with these options where you can either, um, you know, if you don't want address line two, you can go ahead and hide that where you only have the address line one, the city, the state, the zip code. And then here you have other options where you can show or you can hide specific fields. So let's go back to add fields. So you can see here that we can now go ahead and use all of these right here for our form, right? Now over here also we have date and time. This is also a very important one as well. The date and time is another element where you can insert date and time and you can use this to basically create the booking form where if you want someone to book the date and time, you can create that format right there. They also have just date and they also have just time as well, but I think date and time is most used right here. So this is also what you can add to your form to make it a little bit more accurate. But I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And if we scroll this form right here, you're gonna see that they've created many different options right here. So dental surgery you are registered with. Here we have location A and location B. This can be something like our Northridge location or Santa Clarita, right? And we can add in more as well. So you can add in like another form if you want to do that or another option right here by clicking on the plus and then you can add in a third city like Chatsworth or something like that. Okay. And then below that we have the date and time. So here you can see that WP Forms template, it just created a better, you know, a better version of it. So we have when would you like to attend and then they can enter the date and the time. Below that we have the radio buttons where they can go ahead, I'm sorry, the check boxes where they can go ahead and check any of these options right here. This right here, this is just a text field where they can just go ahead and type in anything they want. And then there's also another radio button right here, multiple choice, and then also comments and stuff like that, right? Now, let's say for instance, you guys want to add conditional logic. And this is actually one of the newer features that the Pro plugin offers. Now, let's say for example, the Santa Clarita office was specifically for surgeries. And we might need to ask them a little bit more information, right? So right here, I'm gonna put surgeries. Now, let's say, for example, they select surgery, right? We need to ask them maybe if they're in critical pain or if there's something else that I want to ask them. So over here under add fields, I'm going to take the single line text and we're going to drop it below that. Okay. For the single line text, I'm going to put, are you in pain? And this will be required or actually put like a level of tooth pain. You know, I, I don't know, something like that. There we go. Level of tooth pain, one, two, ten. So now that we entered this in right here, I'm not going to go to Smart Logic, and then I'm going to click on Enable Conditional Logic. All right. Okay. So here we go. We're going to show this field if specific requirements are met. So we're going to click on this drop-down arrow right here, and here we have Dental Surgery you are registered with. So you can see that this is the current one that we're basically talking about. So we're going to show this field is and then here we're going to select the santa clarita surgery so let's reiterate here we're going to show this specific form if the user selects dental surgery you are registered with and is the santa clarita office so this form will only display i'm sorry this field will only display if these conditions are met let's create another one so over here add fields and we're going to drop another one and let's imagine for this specific line text that we need to accommodate children because some children are nervous about going to the dentist. So maybe they have a children's office that only deals with you know kids and dental surgeries or dental stuff. So over here on the label, I'm gonna put, does your child prefer numbing cream or needle shot? Okay. So for this specific text, we're just gonna ask the parents if they want their children to get numbing cream for their tooth, maybe they need to pull it out, or they can take a needle shot to also numb the tooth and gums. Now, we're only gonna show this if they go to one of our offices where we serve children. So over here, smart logic, enable conditional logic, and we're gonna show this dental surgery you are registered with if this is in our Northridge office. Okay, and then I'll click on save. Now, quickly, let's go back over here to Northridge and we're going to put child location. All right. And then we'll click on save. 
So essentially right now we have conditional logic applied. So if you guys do want to have specific forms propagate depending on what the user select, that's how you guys can use the smart logic. Next, we're gonna add a section divider here. Okay, we're gonna add a section divider. We're just gonna divide up this form a little bit. And then we're gonna introduce you guys to the layouts. Now the layout is essentially a style of how you guys can lay out your columns. So here we have the layout, and if I click on this, we now have the option to create specific columns. So if you guys do want to create like a four column row right here, and then start adding in elements, you guys can use the layout module now to basically drag and drop elements, very similar to a page builder. So I'll go ahead and click on the plus icon, and now we're going to select the phone. All right, and then we can do the same thing here by clicking on the plus icon, and then maybe we can drag in something like a address, right? So if you guys do want to build out your form like this, you guys also now have access to the layout. This was actually a newer feature that they recently introduced probably just a few months ago. So I just want to uh, make sure that you guys know what the layout is. It essentially allows you to build the contact form with columns and stuff like that. Very similar to page builders like Elementor. So I'll go ahead and just insert another text. And you can see that you guys can build out your form like this using the layout section if you guys want to do that. All right, but I just want to introduce you guys to that layout. I'm not going to build it from scratch because we already have a really nice contact form. So I'm just going to delete that. And now let's go ahead and click on save. So now that we have this form, let's go ahead now and apply it to the websites. And then I'll walk you guys through how to add a payment gateway onto this form so people have to pay in order to book. All right, so here is our contact us page. And this was our first form, but we're gonna get rid of this now. It's gonna go. So let's go ahead and turn on the page builder and let's replace it now with our new booking contact form. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click and delete. And we're going to find our widget here. And I'm gonna take this widget, drag it there. For select form, we're gonna select the dentist appointment form. So here is our form. Let's go ahead and click on updates. And now let's test the form. So I'll click on view page. All right, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and go through this form really quick. I'm gonna enter my first name, my last name. Here's an address. Okay, I'm just gonna put in some general information. Okay, I'm also gonna show you how to create the autofill with the Google API a little bit later in this video. Here I'll put in a zip code. We're gonna put in our Secret AOL email address. I actually don't own that. Here, people can enter in their phone number. All right, so we're gonna find United States here, put in the phone number. I believe there is an option here to basically only have your country phone number on there because I think that might be a little bit too much for people who are local. They're gonna see all these random countries and they might think you're some large corporate company, but hey, if you wanna go that route, go for it. Here we have the dental surgery you're registered with, okay? Now, if I select Chatsworth, you're gonna see nothing happens, right? So we have no conditional logic for Chatsworth. However, we do have conditional logic for these other two right here. So if we enter in the Santa Clarita, you're now gonna see that this appears. So level of tooth pain, you can put 10, right? Or they can put in whatever. Now, if they select the Northridge, another custom field will display. So this will disappear and another one will display specifically for our child location. So now that I selected that, you will see that does your child prefer numbing cream or needle shots, right? So that's how you can implement conditional logic for your form, right? But uh, let's just go to Santa Clarita. I'll put 10. When would we like to attend? Well, I'll put the 22nd at uh, six o'clock, right? And then we'll check box some of these. I love this dentist. I mean, no one likes going to the dentist, guys. I just got my teeth cleaned and it's it's just it's just uncomfortable. Has anyone had symptoms of this in the last 14 days? I don't wanna say it because then my video might get demonetized. So I'm just going to uh, the C word, right? I'll put no and then we'll click on submit. All right, so we submitted the contact form. Now let's take a look at our email address. And here we go. Right away, you'll see that we have the dentist appointment form. So I'll go ahead and click on the form. And now you're gonna see all the relevant information that the user has filled out, neatly organized, so you can see that everything is filled out, and then you guys can either call this person or you can email them and talk to them or reschedule or anything that you guys need with your clients.
So creating a contact form with WP Forms is actually a really simple process, as you guys can tell. Uh, but maybe you guys want to add a payment gateway onto your booking form. So let's say, for example, you want to accept a $50 fee when people book on your website because that also starts to take up your schedule. So let me show you guys now how to add the payment gateway Stripe and PayPal to your booking form so people will have to pay you first before they book on your website. All right, so now we're gonna integrate Stripe and PayPal onto our contact form. To do that, we're gonna go to WP Forms and we're gonna go to Add-ons. Now, depending on the plan that you guys picked, uh, I believe this is only available for the Pro plan or something like that. So here you guys will see that we have the PayPal Commerce add-on, which is really, really simple to get started with. And then we also have the Stripe add-on. So you guys will go, wanna go ahead and activate those. So right here, I'll click on Activate. Now that that's activated, now we can go ahead and insert our credentials. So let's go over here to settings and we're going to go to payments. Here you guys will see that we can now integrate Stripe. You can see my website is already connected, but right here, you'll just click on switch account or also create an account. Once you guys do that, it'll then bring you to this specific screen. Now there is one requirement. You guys will need to have a Stripe account. So let's first talk about Stripe. So this is stripe.com and stripe.com is a free website that allows you to integrate payment gateways on your websites. There is no credit check whatsoever and it's free to get started. So you'll just go through the process and make an account. And once you guys do that, I will then meet you in your dashboard. So this is the Stripe dashboard here. And after you guys make an account and you guys go through the process of linking your bank account, there's pretty much nothing left to do on the Stripe backend right here. But you guys can go ahead and take a look at your payments and everything right here. But once you guys have created an account, you can actually sync it up with your WP Forms contact form. So let's go back over here. So once you guys go through the process, you guys sign up and make an account, you guys will then go ahead and enter your email for your Stripe account. You'll then click on continue and then you'll enter in your Stripe credentials right here. Once you guys enter your Stripe credentials, you'll then click on login. Once you connect your credentials, you will then see that you have your accounts right here. So I'll go ahead and enter my accounts and then click on connect. You guys should only have one account if you're brand new. I do have a few other businesses, so I'm just going to use the demo business for now. And that's it. You have now integrated Stripe onto your websites. So if we scroll down right here, I'll click on save settings. Once we've done that, we can now add the Stripe payment gateway onto our form. So let's go back over here to all forms. And we're going to go to the dentist appointment form and I'll click on edit. So now we're back to our contact form and we're going to scroll down right here. And now you're going to see at the bottom, we have the Stripe credit card, but I'm going to go ahead and just make a simple fee for booking, right? So I'm going to take the multiple items here. And I'm selecting the multiple items because I want them to actually check this, but I'm just gonna use it as one. So this is gonna be like our booking fee. And here I'll do booking fee and we're gonna put $50, right? And then I'll just get rid of these two right here. I'll show the price. Under add fields, I'm now going to add in the total, right? Okay, and after the total, we're then gonna take the Stripe credit card payments and put it below that. And I think that's it. And once we're done, we'll click on save. Now we need to go ahead and enable Stripe again. So over here, payments, enable Stripe. And then here, obviously we have the payment description. And again, this is the payment description that's gonna show up on their credit card. We want to select an email that sends to the Stripe payment receipt and also the customer email as well. And then of course, we can set up subscriptions a little bit later. So right here, I'll click on save. Now let's go ahead and test out the contact form. All right, so here is our contact form and here I'll enter my information, our email address. All right, we're gonna go ahead and keep scrolling down here. Uh, needle, which probably is crazy. Most kids don't want it needles, you know. <laughs> I don't think anyone does. So here we'll put some time and here we're gonna select the booking fee. And then here we can go ahead and select the Stripe credit card. Now, I just want to showcase a different style of this. So this is one way on how you guys can display it. And if you go to your options over here, I'll go ahead and close this really quick and goes to the settings and go to payments. We can create a different way with the card elements. So I'll click on card elements and I'll go ahead now and refresh this page and you're gonna see that a new form will display. 
So here we have just the card and the name of card. So it really depends on how you want to approach it. But uh, here you can see that this is a little bit more compact way of users entering their credit card on your website. All right, so that is pretty much how you guys can integrate payment gateways onto your contact form. As you guys can tell, there's various ways on how to use this contact form, right? You guys can use this for um, you know, planning event registrations where you can have users pay for signing up. You can use it for a booking fee and just tons of other various ways. Now that we know how to integrate payment gateways, now let's talk about how to create a recurring uh, donation form on your website. This way, users can come to your website and either click on the buy me a coffee or they can donate to you on your websites. So let me walk you guys through how to set that up. So let's now add a donation subscription on your website. So it's pretty simple. Let's go over here to dashboard, WP forms. Here, I'll click on add new. I believe they already have one here. I'll type in coffee. Here we go. Buy me a coffee form. I'll click on use the template. There's no reason for me to build it from scratch, obviously, because we already know how to use these elements. So the first element is the email elements. The second one is a single item. And the next one is a Stripe credit card. So what we're going to do is that we're just going to go over here to the payment section. We'll make sure Stripe payments are enabled and then we'll turn on the subscription payments. Here we have plan name. So I'll put monthly support. And this will be on a monthly period. And we will send it to the customer email. Here I'll click on save. And I will close that. We will then take this form right here and I'll, I'm gonna take this and put it on our blog post. So let's go back to visit site here. And I'm gonna go to my blog here and I'm gonna put it on the sidebar. So if I scroll down, I'll click on one of these posts. And up here, I'll access the theme builder. Single post. And here I will go ahead and click on edit and we're gonna now edit this post. Now there's various ways on how you guys can do this, right? Um, over here, we'll go ahead and scroll down. And what we can do here is we can take a short code, right? And we can paste it over here like this, right? And then I can put in the form like that, right? So we can do this. However, this just doesn't really look that efficient, does it? It doesn't really look that professional. So what I wanna do here is, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this. Here you guys can see that I put buy me a coffee. And I actually took an image module here. And what we're going to do is that we're actually going to link it to a different page. So over here, link, custom URL. And then, for example, we can make a page, you know, where we can donate. But I'll just put like the contact us page and then I'll click on update. Now, right here you have link. So what we can do is that we can actually make a whole new page specifically for the donation form. So what I'm going to do up here is quickly make a new page. So up here, plus new and page. And this will be like donation. And what we're going to do is that we're just going to paste that block from WP Forms. I'll click on publish and publish. And then I'll view the page. I recommend doing this this way because this is just a little bit more dedicated. You know, it makes it look a little bit more cleaner as well. So now that I have the page, I'll go back over here to single post. And then I'll paste that in there like that, you know? And I think that's a little bit more professional because you don't want like a whole credit card filler out thing right here. It just, it doesn't really look good. It looks unprofessional and the image looks much cleaner. So let's go over here to the blog, right? We're gonna scroll down, click on a blog post and we'll keep scrolling. Here, I'll click on buy me a coffee. And then it takes us to the donation form. And right here, we can go ahead and fill all this information out. So that's how you guys can add a donation form to your website. I recommend doing it through the sidebar with the image. I think it looks more professional. And then also create a dedicated landing page specifically for your donation. So adding a donation form is pretty simple as you guys can tell. Now this last example, I'll show you guys how to turn this into sort of an e-commerce or some sort of services contact form where people can buy products or services through your contact form. You guys probably already know by now, but let me just run you guys through on how to do that. So here we're in our back end, and we're gonna create now a form that is specifically dedicated for e-commerce. So over here we have forms. Here click on add new. And under search templates, we can go ahead and just type in like e-commerce, right? Here we have e-commerce form. So I'll click on use this template. And here is the form. If we scroll down, you're gonna see select e-commerce product. This was all done using the multiple items, right? 
So let me go ahead and just walk you guys through on how to reenact that. So I'm gonna delete this really quick. And what we're gonna do is that we're just going to take the multiple items, we're gonna drag it in there, right? And here we have the items. Now the first one, we'll just put like computer. And the next one will be phone, right? And this will be like SEO services. And what we're gonna do is that we're going to use the image for the icon to showcase it like that. So for the computer, we'll go ahead and select one. We'll go ahead and put in, I don't know, what should we put here for the computer? There we go, all right, cool. We've got that one. For the phone, we'll throw in that one right there. And then for the SEO services, we'll just throw in something else, uh, you know, we'll throw in this, this guy right here, right there. All right. And then we have some other options where we can make the, you know, choose the image style. You know, we can make it modern or classic. We can choose to add the price after it. Now, a word of advice is I would go ahead and put in the images with the same size. The reason why is because if you have images that are different sizes, it'll come out a little distorted, but you guys can go ahead and upload the images with the same size. And here we have like one column, right? Two column. And then we also have three column. And then you can also inline these as well like that. Okay. Here we have extras. So like we talked about earlier, we have the extras where you can add in different extra options for these if you guys wanna go that route, but uh, that's strictly up to you. And if we scroll down, you guys will see that we now have this. So next we have the file upload. The file upload will allow people to upload specific files that you can use. For example, a very common practice with this is t-shirts. So if you are making t-shirts and you want people to upload a logo or something like that, you can use the actual element over here on the left side. And this is the element, it's called file upload. You can use this and people can upload files onto your websites. And then we have delivery. You can see that they use the drop down items as delivery. So they use this in a specific way. You know, that's a very, um, it's a very clever way to use it. So basically what they did here was going to add fields. They use drop down items right here. And instead of actually creating the actual items, they use this as delivery instead. You can see how dynamic this can get, right? It can get really, really dynamic. So I'll go ahead and close that. And that's pretty much it. You know, that's how we can basically create an e-commerce form. You can simply drag in those elements and use that any which way you want. Now, the last thing you wanna do is you wanna add in the Stripe credit card. So over here, we'll go ahead and drag in the Stripe credit card. And once we do that, always make sure that you have to activate it. So over here under payments, enable Stripe, Carol in store. And then we'll, you know, we'll add in the emails and then we'll save it. All right, and then we'll go ahead and test it out really quick. So we'll go back to our contact us and I'll, I'll add in the form. So here is our form. And if we scroll down, you will see that we now have multiple items. So we have the computer, we have the phone, and then we have the SEO services. So if I select SEO services, you will see that it lights up and we have the green check mark. And then also you can add in the extras if you guys choose to do that as well. Here we can upload a file, right? And then we have delivery. And depending on the delivery, you will also see that the price will dynamically update as well right here. So $77. And users can go ahead and purchase this and check out directly on your website. So that is pretty much a majority of the examples that you guys can use with the WP Forms plugin. As you guys can tell, this plugin, you can do a lot with it, right? We've created various different type of contact forms, booking forms, donation forms, the works. Now, let me give you guys a parting gift and show you one last feature, and that's how to add geolocation for your contact forms. Geolocations allows Google to actually geolocate where the visitor's typing from. It also will input the addresses that the user is close to, so you can see that it makes it a little bit more automated for your customers. It's pretty professional, so let me show you guys how to implement this on your contact form. All right, so first let's go over here to WP Forms, and we're gonna go to Settings. We're now gonna to go to geolocation, and then we're gonna activate geolocation. You guys might need to install a plugin at first, and you'll go ahead and install it, and then you'll click on activate. Once you guys do that, you will see that you have the option for Mapbox search API, and you also have access to Google Places API. Now we're gonna go back to the WP Forms documentation, and I'll walk you guys through how to set this up. 
we're also going to set a new API with the WP Forms plugin. Now, we did this earlier, right? So this is just another API that I'll walk you guys through and how to use. So right here, I'll click on Google Cloud Console. I'll also leave this link in the description below this video just to help you guys get to the same screen as me. All right, so now that you clicked on that link, we're now gonna go to library and then we're gonna enable a few APIs. Now, the first API that we're gonna enable is the places API. So go ahead and make sure that you enable this API and then I'll click on manage. So now that I clicked on manage, it brought me to this screen right here under the credentials. Now, at the time of making this video, Google has actually been moving this stuff around a lot. So if this changes with you guys in the future, go over here to credentials and then you're gonna see the actual APIs that are available right here. So Maps API key. Google tends to move this around and change the interface and that's a little bit out of my control, but I'll do my best to get you guys on the same screen. So here's the Maps API key. And I first wanna select websites. I'll scroll down. We're now gonna click on restrict key and we're gonna select the three APIs. We're gonna select geocoding API, Maps JavaScript API, and then places API. Once that's done, we'll click on save. All right, and now that we have the green check mark, we'll now go ahead and click on show key. And this is the key that we're gonna copy and paste on our website. So let's go back to our website. We're now going to paste in that key right there. So under geolocation, we'll scroll down, we'll paste in the API key right there. We'll then scroll down and click on save settings. Now there's one more option that we need to do in order to add geolocate on our form. Let's go back over here to our forms. We're gonna go to our form and click on edit. Now here under the address form, we'll go ahead and go to the advanced section. We're gonna scroll down and you wanna make sure that enable address autocomplete is on. You guys can additionally turn on the display map if you guys wanna do that as well. But I just want to enable you know, the auto address completes. And then at the top right, I'll click on save. Now let's take a look at our contact form. All right, and here is our contact us page and we're gonna scroll down. And now when I type in an address right here, you're gonna see that it automatically picks up all these different address right there like that. And it auto fills everything for your customers. So that's how you guys can add geolocate option for your contact form. Well, party people, I hope this video helped you guys out. As you guys can tell, you know, there is a lot you guys can do using this contact form. Um, just by like using the examples I gave you guys, you can pretty much turn this into any kind of form or website or whatever it is, even like a squeeze page, you know, there's so many different ways how you guys can use this form. So uh, I hope this video helped. If you guys have any questions about WP Forms, let me know in the comments below. If there's something that I missed or something that you wanted me to talk about, also let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like this video and I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.